We watched the movie Eternals again and one question popped into our minds. How long does it generally take for a celestial to be born or for the emergence to take place once the celestial seed is inside a host planet? So in the MCU, a celestial seed was placed inside the Earth 7,000 years ago in the past but why did it take so long for it to emerge and how did it grow? Let's discuss everything about them in detail in this video, their origins, motives and life cycle as well as powers. So subscribe if you haven't already and now let's do this thing. Their origins and motives. One begs the question, how did they come to be? Since they were here even before the universe began and even before the infinity stones were created, the celestials are the universe's oldest race. They were present long before the birth of creation and were responsible for bringing planets and life forms from all around the universe. They used their boundless cosmic power to create planets, stars and life forms as well as bringing light into the universe and stop the darkness from overcoming everything else. They seeded planets with nascent celestial seeds in order to create more celestials and expand the bounds of life in the universe. They are not evil nor good but just indifferent to the lives of mortals and even gods. Their sole purpose was clockwork to create more of themselves so that they can create life and stars so that they would be in turn hosts for more emerging celestials. This also shows that celestials are asexual in nature and are born out of created seeds. They usually need host planets with an exception, Ego, who didn't have that. He in fact became a planet, quite the opposite. They can also reproduce with models, giving life to celestial hybrids as in the case of Star-Lord, Peter Quill. So their appearance, let's talk a little bit on this before going to their life cycle. The celestials appear to have a humanoid appearance. Their bodies appear to have skeletal and neurological aspects that were identical to humans but on a planetary or even a bigger scale. When compared to a fully grown celestial, a human-sized eternal barely register as particles of dust. For example, one servered head of a celestial called Nowhere is huge enough to house a mining colony and it contains enough extractable minerals to keep it running for decades and even centuries for that matter. Even though Esau the Searcher resembles the other celestials in appearance, his height and stature, however, are shown to be enormously smaller even though it's the size of a mountain. Ego, on the other hand, was of a planetary scale and although he did have a human avatar, but that's about it. His real self is the entire planet he consciously formed over millions of years. So now we come to the celestial life cycle. We can most definitely say that a celestial is biologically immortal and cannot die from old age. That is if time even has any effect on them, but they can be killed or they can die from other means as we can see in the cases of Ego being killed by the Guardians of the Galaxy, nowhere by someone maybe Null, the God of the Symbiotes, and then Tiamat in the movie Eternals by the Eternals themselves. So we have quite a bit to unravel here. The Celestials as seen in the Eternals were different from the likes of Ego but not as much as you'd think. A Celestial's general appearance and life would change in accordance to how they were nurtured in their early life stages. Let's see the life cycle of them and then talk about ego after that. So from seed to emergence, the normal celestial life cycle takes millenniums, many millennia to complete. Arishim the judge decreed that every few million years, some celestials must be born. After being seeded inside the planet, the celestial grows feeding on three things. One, the innate cosmic energy that they were designed to possess. Two, it feeds on the energy within the core of the planet and also the minerals within it. The hotter it is, and the more dense the raw materials is present, the faster it would grow physically. And thirdly, the most important part, it needs a massive amount of intelligence to grow mentally in order for it to be ready to come out and harness the cosmic energies. So let's talk about the last one, the third criteria. A uh, celestial needs sentient life forms for it to mature and learn, feeding off of the sentient energy. As per real life estimates since 10,000 BC, there have been around 100 billion humans that have ever lived and maybe this is the number needed for a celestial to mature and emerge. But there is one more important point to consider, the usage of the infinity stones. So even though Thanos wiping out half the population of the universe might have delayed the emergence, it would have just taken away just a tiny bit of the time frame as compared to the cosmic scale. The population would have redoubled again in a span of 50 to 100 years and it's back to square one. And when these infinity stones were used a second time during Endgame, it created a huge surge of cosmic energy that gave the necessary boost for the emergence of Tiamat and maybe others as well across the universe. When a celestial is born, a massive armored humanoid erupts from its planet in a cataclysmic explosion. 
But then again, Tiamat's birth was rather peaceful. If you would compare the first scene of the Celestial's emergence as shown by Arishim and Tiamat's emergence, maybe he was reluctant and hence granted the energy to the Eternals in the form of the Unimine to kill himself in order to save the billions of humans that Ajax, the leader of the Eternals, once stated that they were special. Even in the comics, Tiamat always had an affinity towards humans and even sided with them once in a while, even defying the Fulcrum. So enough about that, now we come to Ego's case. We think that Ego, like the others, was born out of a celestial seed. But the difference here is that Ego never found a host planet to mature in. As stated by himself, when he first became conscious, he was all alone and over millions of years, he harnessed the cosmic energies, learned by himself and grew into a planet. In comparison to this, the other Celestials had the massive advantage of being inside a planet's core, feeding off on the minerals and the heat and also transforming themselves into humanoid beings as a reflection of them feeding on the sentient humanoid intelligences. They were never alone. They matured faster in the time frame of several thousand years as compared to Ego who took millions of years to do the same. And he became a planet in appearance because that's all he knew. And with limited access to cosmic magic since there was no sentient energy for him to learn from. Nevertheless, the Celestials can manipulate matter and energy on a massive scale and they are the universe's most potent energy creators. Although Ego's case was different, the others, their origins, life cycle and motives were all generally the same. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. With that, we come to the end of it. So do hit that like button for support and subscribe as well to be a part of the MindQ family. But most of all, smash that bell icon for regular updates on new videos right here on this channel. Till the next one, take care fam.